TLC is something we all need. Tender, loving care. That's exactly what is being delivered through the Luke Commission TLC, a faith-based nonprofit organization operating in Swaziland since 2005. We have the founders here, Dr. Harry and Echo Vanderwall. Harry is a doctor of pediatrics and internal medicine, and his wife Echo is a certified physician's assistant. How beautiful is that? <laughs> what a team. Thanks. And Thank uh, we're going to just see how much more beautiful this team has become <laughs> very soon. But I think, first of all, I, I want you to tell in a capsule a beautiful story of how God brought you together. Well, sure. Well, for us, Echo and I both, we've had a desire to go overseas and do mission work since we were children. I was 17, Echo was 8. We both felt called to go over to Africa to do some medical missions. Didn't know exactly where or what. We met in university, both had a desire to go to Africa and kind of fell in love with, I think, that and then fell in love with each other <laughs> as a result. Um, so then we just started our, our, our training and just went to school through Ohio, different schools in Ohio, and then... Now you say started your training. Yes. Did you have these career goals pegged before you knew you'd be working together? Because it's perfect. Well, right? actually, Echo wanted to be a doctor, this... actually, and I was going to be a doctor as well. Oh, and then... Okay. After we got together and don't have a family, Echo decided a physician assistant would be a good choice because there's not as much residencies, not as much uh, training as far as that goes, more on the job training. So we opted that, so she chose to go that direction, which was nice. We could start having kids right away, so it was good. Yes, we're going to see just how busy you are as a mother very That's shortly. Right. We may even hear some sound effects before our chat is done. That's true. Now, you picked the country in the world with the largest incidence of AIDS. Did you just want a big challenge or why Swaziland? <laughs> oh, God sent us to Swaziland. We always say God picked Swaziland for us because in 2004, when Harry was just finishing his training, we went to Swaziland and we went straight to the rural areas and saw the gaps in healthcare in the rural areas. And at that time, people were dying in great numbers, mm -hmm. especially the people between the ages of 20 to 40. So we were losing parents of children all mm -hmm. over the place. And God started birthing a vision in our hearts of how we could effectively and efficiently reach rural communities for Christ and to improve um, the incidence of HIV in Swaziland. And it's been amazing to see what's happened no, the past it eight years. Eight years. Yeah, eight that's years. why. Yeah. I said, why did I put an eight there? That's why <laughs> I put an eight there. And so we don't have the same numbers of people dying. No, people are living longer um, and the antiretrovirals have gotten further out into the rural areas. And the message needed to be spread. What happens when you're on the proper medication? And people in rural areas didn't know that at the time. They just mm -hmm. thought you get HIV, you die. You get mm -hmm. HIV, you die. And the message had to get out. And that meant that there had to be people who were dying that got up off their deathbeds and went and lived with their families again and lived productive lives. The communities had to see that. And yeah. the transformation's head turning. It is. Where you see yes. these withering people mm -hmm. uh, on the, almost their last breath and now they're out doing their jobs. That's and, exactly yeah. right. It's so amazing. It is amazing. Do you have people come from North America to participate? We do, yes. We have teams that come over and it's very important to get them on the ground so they can see what's do, what is going on so they can come back and be ambassadors for the work that the Luke Commission's doing. So and hard not for to get the country of Swaziland. <laughs> right. Once yes. you've been there, yeah. you just get hooked. Yeah. Let's look at a few pictures of uh, the Luke Commission yes. in action. Oh, I know that's a baobab tree. Look at, tell me those aren't people lined up waiting to see you, Harry. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, on average, we treat about 500 patients a day at our clinic. So it's quite busy. Usually about 750 people or so come. Uh, so we have a chance in the morning just to really be able to educate them about HIV. Our staff works endlessly to talk about the truth of HIV to break the st stigma. And here I am treating one of the patients that come through the queue. Um, come through the line and it's just amazing to be able to touch one-on-one -on -one each individual. They each get prayed with, they each get counseled, uh, if they, they're offered testing if they want to get tested, so a variety of services. When we first were there in Swaziland, there was so much crisis care. It was really people were dying left and right. We were just putting IVs it's in scrambling. and just, mm -hmm. yeah, really. And so in the past, especially the past three or four years, as things have picked up, more of the medicines are getting out in the rural areas and, and we're able to continue the education and trying to, trying to meet these communities at their level, educating them. We're seeing now a shift. I mean, there's still is the high HIV rate. There still are people that are dying, but it's not quite the crisis level it was three or four years we're ago. We're able to do prevention work where before we were doing crisis. So care. education, yes. Yes. awareness. That's right. What do you need the most right now in Swaziland? 
we just need more people to be aware of what's going on. Number one, we need prayer support because we know that we're at a crossroads right now. The international statistics say that if something doesn't change in Swaziland, by the year 2030, there will no longer be adults living in Swaziland. And by the year 2050, Swaziland will be considered extinct by international statistics. Really? Yes. yes. So it's extremely important that we're engaging now in prayer and awareness of what's going on in Swaziland because Swaziland's at a crossroads. And we know that God is miraculous and that he can change the statistics. He's in charge of them and he can make things right. change. He and wants to reconcile yep, everything right. in Amen. his son. That's right. And you're there for him yep. on behalf of him. And you have another major project that <laughs> you have engaged in together. And I'm going to show the picture first. <laughs> there is actually one more child than I was anticipating. <laughs> that precious girl. Finally, you started with triplets. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Triplets? Yeah, they're 11 now. So yeah. That was good training for Swaziland. <laughs> oh, wow. I can't even imagine. This is, there are going to be some people just shocked that in a place of such need, you are raising these precious children. And they are blessed for that. They're yeah. blessed. blessed. Yes, and it's amazing blessed. having your family with you, how the impact it is. You know, as we're there and our kids are playing with the Swazi kids that are there, it just makes us much more real, much more tangible. And so it allows, when we speak about Christ, we speak, up, speak about HIV, how much more real our words are because we're just like them, we're just people. And initially, think, yeah, initially when we went to Swaziland, they thought if you touch people, Yes. That you get It'll HIV. Yeah. Well, then we yeah. threw our four boys out in the middle of all the kids, <laughs> and they were playing and touching, and there was so much um, subliminal messaging that went out to say, wait, the Vanderwells aren't afraid, so yeah. why are we afraid, yes. you know? And, and they're medical yeah, professionals. That's they know right. everything. That's right. <laughs> I, I hope somebody's got a camera, because they're all dressed in red. This is the Luke Commission. That's right. In full force. <laughs> and look at this. How could I not share this? <laughs> now, you came from two different U.S. states. Yep. That's what, right is home when you come back? To well, we travel so much. We're traveling a good six, six to eight weeks when we're back in the States. And then we're out to Idaho. Idaho is the base for Luke Commission. Ah. And so that's where all of our offices are for Luke Commission. And your website? www.lukecommission.org. Can't so. get simpler than that. I think it's about time, Mom. And um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you how lovely it is just to be seated with this wonderful family. Thanks. I want to say, folks at home, let's pray. Uh, for the Vanderwalls, for the Luke Commission, and for Swaziland. Amen. Mm -hmm. And on a dangerous precipice, but God called you. That's right. Because that's not going to be the end of the story. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. I'm so excited. Thank you for Thank coming. You Thank you. Thank you so much, much for having you. us. Thank you.